In this video, we will try some College Board multiple choice questions pertaining to inverse functions. This is AP Precalculus Topic 2.8. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. The table gives values for the invertible function y equals f of x for selected values of x. Which of the following input-output pairs describes f inverse? To find f inverse, we reverse all of the inputs and outputs. So f inverse will have the point 1 comma negative 2, 6 comma 1, 2 comma 2, and negative 3 comma 5. If we rewrite these in order, we get option B. Do you see how we have the point negative 3 comma 5? and then the point 1 comma negative 2 and so on. Number 2, the function f is defined by f of x equals the square root of 4 minus x squared on the closed interval from negative 2 to 0. Which of the following expressions defines f inverse of x? Let's find an expression for f inverse. f of x is another name for y and the first step of finding the inverse is to switch x and y. So we get x is equal to the square root of 4 minus y squared. Now we must solve for y. Let's start by squaring both sides. So we get x squared. When we square this, the radical is going to go away. So we end up with 4 minus y squared. Adding y squared to both sides and subtracting x squared from both sides we get y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. Now let's take the square root of both sides. So we get y is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. Actually, when we take the square root of both sides, the answer could be plus or minus, and we have to decide which it is. This will be easy to figure out if we analyze the domain and range of f of x and f inverse. We are given that the domain of f of x is the closed interval from negative 2 to 0. What about the range? In this case, plugging in the endpoints of the domain will give you the range. Because if you plug in negative 2 right here, that gives us 4 minus negative 2 squared. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. That gives us 4 minus 4, which is 0. That is the smallest possible value of f of x. Um, we know this for sure because uh, we can't have a negative number under this radical anyway. That would be imaginary. So 0 is the smallest possible value. If we plug in the upper limit of the domain, if we plug in 0, then we end up with the square root of 4 minus 0. That's the square root of 4, which is 2. That's the biggest possible value we can get. So this is the range. This is really useful information because for f inverse, the domain and range will be reversed. So f inverse has a domain of 0 to 2 and a range of negative 2 to 0. The range tells me whether to pick positive or negative for my inverse expression. Negative 2 to 0, that's 0 or negative. So we need to go with negative square root of 4 minus x squared. That narrows it down to either a or c. The answer is c because that's the option that has the correct domain, the closed interval from 0 to 2. Number 3, the function g is given by g of x equals 4x plus 6 divided by 5. Which of the following defines g inverse of x? g of x is another name for y. The first step of finding the inverse is to switch x and y. So we get x equals 4 y plus 6 divided by 5. Now we need to solve for y. 
multiplying both sides by 5 gives us 5x is equal to 4y plus 6. Subtracting 6 from both sides gives us 5x minus 6 is equal to 4y. Finally, dividing both sides by 4 gives us 5x minus 6 over 4 is equal to y. So the answer is d. Number 4. The function f is defined by f of x equals 4x squared plus 3 for x greater than or equal to 0. Which of the following expressions defines the inverse of f? Let's get the domain and range for the original function and the inverse all sorted out. We are given that the domain of f is x is greater than or equal to 0. But what about the range? The smallest input value is 0. If we plug that in, we get f of x equals 3. That is the smallest output value. So that's the lower boundary of the range. There is no upper boundary of the range because x can get as big as it wants to be. And as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, f of x gets bigger and bigger. So here's the domain and range of f of x. The domain and range of f inverse will be the reverse of this. So the domain of f inverse will be the interval from 3 to infinity. In other words, the domain of f inverse is x is greater than or equal to 3. The range will match the domain of f. So the range of f inverse is y is greater than or equal to 0. Options A and B have the wrong domain. So we've narrowed it down to either C or D. This is the original function f of x. The first step towards finding the inverse is to switch x and y. So we get x is equal to 4y squared plus 3. Subtracting 3 from both sides, we get x minus 3 is equal to 4 y squared. Dividing both sides by 4, we get x minus 3 over 4 is equal to y squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we get the square root of x minus 3 over 4 is equal to y. Well, not quite. This will either be plus or minus. The range tells us the potential values for y. So the range of f inverse we decided was y has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we need to pick the positive version here. Notice that the entire fraction is under this radical, and that matches option C. Number 5. A water tank is leaking water from a crack in its base. The amount of water in hundreds of gallons remaining in the tank t hours after the crack formed can be modeled by w, a decreasing function of time. Which of the following gives a verbal representation of w inverse, the inverse of w? So w of t gives the amount of water left in the tank at time t. Pay attention to the input and the output. For the original function w, the input is time, and the output is the amount of water in the tank. For w inverse, the input and output will be reversed. For w inverse, the input is the amount of water left in the tank, and the output is time. In other words, W inverse is a function of the amount of water in the tank. We can eliminate options A and B, which both say that W inverse is a function of the amount of time. We've narrowed it down to either C or D. Both of these say that W inverse is a function of the amount of water. We just need to decide whether W inverse is an increasing function or a decreasing function. 
Remember, we are told that the original function w is a decreasing function of time. I do not know what w is going to look like, but I know it is a decreasing function. What will w inverse kind of look like? An inverse function is the reflection of the original function over the line y equals x. If you take a decreasing function and you reflect over the diagonal line y equals x, guess what? It's still going to be decreasing. So the answer is D. W inverse is a decreasing function of the amount of water in the tank. Please memorize the following rule about inverse functions and whether they are increasing or decreasing. If the original function is increasing, the inverse is also increasing. If the original function is decreasing, the inverse is also decreasing. Number six, the graph of y equals f of x is given. Which of the following is the graph of y equals f inverse? We can eliminate one option very quickly because the inverse graph is just the reflection of the original graph over the diagonal line y equals x. It will not change the shape of the graph, just the way it's rotated. So the answer cannot be A because it looks nothing like the original graph. So A is out. Also, notice that f of x is increasing. So f inverse is also increasing. That eliminates option B and it eliminates option C. So guess what? By a process of elimination, the answer must be D. By the way, if there had been more than one increasing option, here's how I would have solved it. I would have picked one point that is on the original function. For example, f of x has the point 2 comma 10 on it. Then I would know that f inverse would have the point 10 comma 2. All right, I'm switching the x and y. Then I could begin to look at any remaining options to see which one has 10 comma 2. For example, d does include the point 10 comma 2. Further confirmation. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.